This is the third generation Fiat 500. The model the brand rather charmingly calls a boutique car for the working man or woman. This new era design will certainly have far more across the board appeal. Contrary to appearances, everything is different, not least the fact that you can only have battery power, this being Fiat's first all-electric car, offered as with the previous 500 in three-door hatch and convertible body styles. It's stylish, cheeky, and best of all, the driving range is class-leading for a tiny EV. In short, if you can afford one, there's lots to like. Every new electric vehicle is significant these days, but this one really is the all-new, all-electric Fiat 500. A new Fiat 500 is a big deal. We had the cute original in 1957, then the new Millennium model, which saved Fiat as a car maker, launched in 2007. And finally, this car introduced in early 2020. It's only offered in full electric form, which is why the old petrol mild hybrid model carries on. And that's part of the reason why the 700 million euro development of this Mark III model has been so lengthy. Fiat wanted to wait for battery technology to mature a bit before launching this car, and that's paid off. It's allowed the brand to engineer in a much longer EV driving range than this model's closest rivals, the Mini Electric, the Mazda MX-30, and the Honda e. In creating this car, Fiat saw no point in holding back. As brand boss Olivier Francois points out, this new 500 isn't just for now, it's for the next decade. So his brand's very first EV is built new from the ground up and it's all electric and only electric right from day one. At the same time though, the tradition of this model line is very much in evidence here. The exterior look, as you can see, is very recognizable, as is the hatch and convertible body style choice. And uh, production of this new era 500 has been returned to the Mirafiori plant in Turin. And that's where the very first 500 model was created way back in 1957. What's probably most important here, though, is that issue of driving range we just mentioned. No other really small EV has got anywhere close to the 199 mile figure that this Fiat can manage between charges. Uh, some larger super mini sized EVs can't beat that either, which makes this car a game changer amongst compact electric cars. So you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, Car and Driving's road test film, to fully brief you on it. The adoption of electric power on a car so urban orientated as a Fiat 500 seems so natural that adapting to this model as an EV shouldn't be difficult for anyone. It certainly doesn't feel that way when you get in and drive it. Okay, so there's no gear stick, but the auto gear shift buttons on the fascia are obvious enough. With key in pocket, you simply press the start button on the dash you wait for the chime, uh, the green ready light, and the vehicle is ready to drive message. Then you press D and off you go. It is nippy away from rest, but you don't get the rather pointless surge of thrust that's found with some rivals, uh, which is all to the good because it makes urban progress smoother. At which point, if the windows are open, you might notice one of this car's endearing little quirks, the low speed pedestrian warning noise. Instead of the otherworldly UFO style whine of other EVs, there's Nina Rota's theme from Fellini's 1973 film Amarcord. It's all rather nice. As more significantly is the news that this Fiat can travel vastly further between charges than the other style conscious small EVs that we've recently tested, the Mini Electric, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30. Instead of 120 to 130 miles, which is what you get from them, or 160 miles, which is what you get from a VW Group EV city car, this 500 offers a WLTP rated figure of up to 199 miles, basically the kind of reading that you get from a more boring looking EV super mini like a Peugeot E208 or a Vauxhall Corsa E.
or at least this Fiat does in this 42 kilowatt hour battery form anyway, which is the 117 BHP motor version that almost all customers will choose. The brand also offers a base 24 kilowatt hour variant with 92 brake horsepower uh, and 115 mile range for urban dwellers who simply don't care about venturing beyond the city limits. But choosing that version is a bit like ordering ravioli de zucca in Turin and then going easy on the black pepper and the parmesan. Uh, you wouldn't get the complete flavour of the dish that you'd ordered, uh, which in this case is one that is able to live outside the city limits as well as within them. Journeys between major destinations, which would have you in something of a cold sweat with range calculations in a Honda Re, an MX-30 or a Mini Electric, can be covered with hardly a second thought in the 42 kilowatt hour version of this Fiat. As long as you use this car's various provided e-mode settings with a bit of forethought, uh, there are three uh, selectable by this little rocker switch down here between the seats where the choke and the starter would have been on the original 1957 version of this model. The car always starts in its usual normal setting, uh, which is the one you'll need if you're going to get anywhere close to replicating the quoted performance figures. Uh, both battery variants take 3.1 seconds to get to 31 miles an hour, and this 42 kilowatt hour version crests 62 in 9 seconds on the way to a limited top speed of 93 miles an hour. For the 24 kilowatt hour model, these stats are 9.5 seconds and 84 miles an hour. You are going to need to quickly shift out of the normal setting though if you're going to properly eke out the battery range. Most of the time your default should probably be range mode in which uh, regenerative braking uh, when you come off the throttle is so abrupt, uh, rather too abrupt actually, that the car slows quickly by itself. Uh, to such an extent in fact that you hardly ever need to use the brake unless you're coming of course to a complete stop. If that's not enough to get you to your destination, then the final mode is the rather curiously named Sherpa setting, but you won't want to select that very often uh, because it does come with some considerable restrictions on both throttle use and the climate system output. These things apart, there's lots here that owners of previous 500 models will recognize. The high-ish seating position, the maneuverability, for example. Uh, this Fiat doesn't quite have the London taxi-like twirling ability of a rear-driven Volkswagen ID3 or a Smart 4.2, but it is as nimble for urban use as any of its predecessors, and it offers a tight 9.6-meter turning circle. You also get the previous model's rather brittle, low-speed ride quality from the conventional McPherson strut front and torsion beam rear suspension, although we don't have as much of an issue with that as some other reviewers. And anyway, things really do smooth out quite a lot once you get out of town. Now here we're trying the hatchback model that most will want, as with previous 500s there is also a convertible version, well it's called a convertible, actually it's only a hatch with a material roof panel that moves back like a giant sunroof at speeds of up to 62 miles an hour and eventually, in about 25 seconds, piles up on top of the boot lid. Uh, still at least the system doesn't add much extra weight and that's just as well because uh, rather inevitably this EV flavoured 500 is is a fair bit heavier than its older combustion counterparts. A top spec version is getting on for about 1.4 tonnes, uh, that's about 350 kilos more than the Mark II mild hybrid petrol version, but all the weight of the mattress shaped Samsung battery has been positioned well down and that compensates for the extra bulk with a low centre of gravity, hence the well controlled body roll at speed through the corners. That ought to give you confidence when you're attacking the turns in this car, and it would if the electric steering showed a bit more interest in communicating to you what's happening through the front wheels. Still, at least the steering system does make possible something genuinely useful, the option of level two standard autonomous driving tech, and that's a rarity on a city car. Uh, when equipped with what Fiat calls its co-driver pack, this 500 will accelerate, brake and stay within its lane autonomously at highway speeds, albeit with the use of just a couple of cameras rather than uh, with the more sophisticated camera and radar combination uh, which you will find on larger cars. If you've opted for a top of the range model you'll be offered an extra cost traffic jam assist setup which uh, rather more usefully given this car's remit will allow the cameras to offer the same self-drive services in start-stop urban use. 
It's just another example of the way that this Fiat breaks new boundaries for this class of car, just as any new 500 really should. How do you reinvent a small car icon? Well, pretty much like this, we'd say. The Mark III version of this Fiat is recognizable to all as a 500, characteristic in proportion, in silhouette, and in its distinctive central line alongside the two previous generation designs. This time around, though, this car is a little wider, a little longer, and a little more sophisticated. But it'd still be as at home in the back streets of Turin as the 57 original. Get up close and personal and the modern differences become more evident. Uh, the all new platform allows for dimensions that give this car a bit more pavement presence. It's six centimeters wider and six centimeters longer than the continuing classic combustion model. The 1.53 meter height means it's four centimeters taller too. Yet at barely uh, 3.6 meters long, this remains one of the smallest cars on the road. As with the previous 500 model, opting for the convertible version gets you what amounts to a folding fabric top rather than a proper folding roof. But it's enough just about to justify that variant's claim to be the first four-seater cabriolet EV on the market. At the front, that distinctive central line we mentioned earlier bisects circular headlamps, which is surrounded by cute curved daytime running light strips. Although you don't actually get the full LED beams, which Fiat's really keen to talk about, unless you stretch right to the very top of the range here. Uh, circular indicators are just below and they flank the edges of this front bumper design, which uh, mirrors that of the 1957 original model, almost facing the road. This uh, grated lower air intake makes a traditional grille above unnecessary. Uh, the panel instead is fashioned with a dedicated 500 logo in place of the usual central Fiat badge. More neat touches feature in profile. These little poked out indicator lights above the front wings, for example. And the 500 designations you'll find on the rear side window trims and on the edges of the tail lights. Uh, that central line continues to attract the eye. It flows across these flush fitting door handles. Uh, the charging flap is here on the driver's side, as would be an extra uh, backwards opening rear door on the alternative 3 plus 1 body style that Fiat sells on the continent, uh, but can't offer here because using that rear portal uh, would deposit passengers into the face of oncoming traffic on British roads. Uh, wheel size, that depends a great deal on trim choice. The base 24 kilowatt hour action spec model uses 15 inch steel rims with this 40 two kilowatt hour version uh, depending on spec you'll either get the 16 inch alloys or these 17 inch rims there are full led tail lamps at the rear plus a neat roof spoiler but the reversing lights and rear fog lights have been positioned low down where they'll be susceptible to accident knocks uh, the tailgate 500 logo gets a light blue border with a play of design and color transforming the final zero into a letter e so, evolution outside, but revolution is promised within. Even unlocking the car can be different. Uh, as an option, Fiat has designed a wearable key fob called a pebble, which works with the keyless entry system. Uh, the door handles, they aren't conventional either. Uh, you reach beneath this flush fitting cover and you activate a touch sensitive pad. And they feature also what the brand calls an e-latch. Uh, that's this button on the door panel. You can press it and hold it to close the windows and the roof on the convertible model. So let's take a look inside. Where familiar modern cues are mixed with a much more elegant and upmarket feel, you'd struggle to believe that the cabin of any Fiat could justify the kind of prices applied to the top versions of this one. But this almost manages it, despite a conspicuous lack of soft touch plastic and this rather awkwardly shaped vegan leather trimmed steering wheel here. Uh, you sit higher than you'd expect to in a small car of this sort 
and you survey the usual 500 model body colour dashboard. Uh, this 10.25 inch screen supplies the required extra dose of sophistication and there's a far more open and spacious feel than the previous model and that's partly because of those uh, dimensional increases which particularly benefit uh, head and shoulder space in here and partly because of the empty space between the lower console and the dash where a gear stick uh, would of course normally be that's been replaced instead by P, R, N and D buttons on the lower part of the fascia. The seats are better as well and not just because they're appropriately environmental. Uh, the eco leather features on the top model and here they're trimmed in sequel cloth and that's manufactured using 20% polyester retrieved from the sea. Uh, more significant is the way that they're better positioned in relation to the pedals uh, and also to the steering wheel which unlike on the old model has reach as well as rake adjustment. Uh, these chairs uh, could still be a bit more supportive though for longer trips. That's not helped by the lack of lumbar adjustment options. And you don't get uh, height adjustment unless you go for an optional comfort seats pack. Uh, that comes with a central armrest too. The instrument binnacle layout, uh, which is usual on an EV, is fully digital and here based around this TFT screen, which is seven inches in size, retains the single dial layout that 500 model regulars will be familiar with. But here it's simpler to read because there's no need for the combustion version's rev counter scale. To the left of the main gauge sits a battery readout, while on the right is a power and charge graphic. Uh, the display dulls helpfully in different shades of light, but there is a fractional lag to the speedo readout, and that's the sort of thing that you'll find with a number of the cockpit features particularly those actually on the center dash infotainment screen. Now we ought to point out that you don't get this 10.25 inch display on the base 24 kilowatt hour action spec model. That variant only comes with a phone cradle for its link and drive system, which then expects your handset to function as a central monitor. Uh, fortunately, this proper Uconnect 5 setup features elsewhere in the range and it offers navigation, advanced speech recognition, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and remote smartphone access. Functionality is based around six main menu options on the left of the monitor, uh, home, media, comfort, nav, phone and vehicle. Comfort offers ventilation options if you don't want to use the piano key style physical buttons retained beneath the display. Media has a four speaker DAB sound system plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And vehicle connects you into the Uconnect system's various EV pages covering power flow, charging schedules and charging settings. Interior storage has been reconsidered and here organized using various modular compartments. Uh, you'll notice this deep stowage box between the seats, which has a USB and a 12 volt port and a cup holder just behind it. It's open as standard, but it gains a sliding lid if you specify the optional comfort seats pack that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, you probably won't immediately catch on to the fact that a further cup holder folds out of the front of this unit or perhaps that the base of this cubby and the uh, center of the dash can be a wireless charging mat and that's complete with a sketch of the Turin skyline. A further reminder of this car's Mirafiori plant is found in the Maiden Torino mat at the bottom of this door pull which unfortunately isn't glued down and moves to the touch uh, so it fails to deliver the sense of solidity that that moniker is presumably supposed to convey. Uh, talking of irritations, the door pockets are tiny and legions of future female owners will share our annoyance that the vanity mirror has been fitted to the passenger side sun visor rather than on the one that's used by the driver. But you do get a huge glove box and the driver's sun visor has a useful ticket flap. What else? Uh, well, the controls for drive mode selection, uh, audio volume and the electronic handbrake feel naturally located on the leading edge of this lower console box. And there's the novelty of having to open the door with this button. Uh, when you do, it shuts again with a proper thunk and that's a mark of this car's very decent build quality. A legacy perhaps of the fact that this car is built alongside Maserati's Levante SUV at Mirafiori. Uh, despite that high seating position though, all round visibility isn't as good as you might hope it would be on a city car like this. The front A pillars with their neat little integrated speakers, they're rather chunky. And there's also quite 
it's a big rear three-quarter blind spot. It's big enough to ensure that you'll be making plenty of use of these standard rear parking sensors. Right, time to take a look out back. Now you can't have everything in a car this short, but we had hoped that this Mark III model's 22 millimeter wheelbase increase might have liberated a bit more space in the rear. It is immediately obvious though, as the front seat angles towards the dash, that this isn't the case. Now at launch, Fiat told us that all this car's interior spaces had been redesigned to give passengers the feeling of sitting on a romantic bench. Well, we don't think you'd feel particularly romantic if you were cooped up back here for very long. Even kids will probably only be in any way comfortable if your front seat occupants sacrifice a bit of legroom. Adults, meanwhile, have plenty to grouse about, apart from the legroom. Uh, the headrests that dig uncomfortably into the back of your neck until you raise them, and more significantly, the fact that your head is likely to be brushing the ceiling due to the fact that the uh, roof arches down towards your forehead just when you don't want it to. Uh, there is at least uh, the low central transmission tunnel that you want from an EV, and these side panels have been scalloped out to create some uh, more space for your elbows. Plus there's easy access to the rear cup holder between the seats. Finally, let's take a look out back. Uh, raising this surprisingly heavy tailgate reveals an unsurprisingly tiny boot area topped off by an equally tiny parcel shelf. Uh, there's only 185 litres of space here, the same as the old combustion model. Fiat points out that this is 14 litres more than you get in a Honda e, but it's 26 litres less than what's offered by a Mini Electric, and it's about half of what you get in a Mazda MX-30. Three carry-on cases will go in, or two with the convertible version. It has the same capacity, but uh, more restricted access. The entry-level action version, that doesn't even give you a split-folding rear bench, uh, so you can easily extend uh, this trunk space. Elsewhere in the range, you get this 50-50 bench split. Uh, nor does it help that much of the space you do get is taken up by this branded bag here, which is provided by the Mode 3 charging cable. Uh, the extra cost Mode 2 charging cable you'll need to plug into a domestic socket has to sit beneath the cargo area base, which doesn't leave much underfloor space for anything else. Uh, flattening the rear bench increases luggage capacity to 550 litres. So, how much is Fiat's latest EV technology going to cost you? Well, as you'd expect, it's a fair bit more than you'd pay for the continuing mild hybrid petrol combustion 500, which at the time of this test in late summer 2021 retailed from around £13,500 in hatchback form. From launch, a hatchback new 500 EV was pitched from just over £20,000 after deduction of the usual £2,500 government plug-in car grant. But that only gets you the base action spec variant featuring a smaller 24 kilowatt hour battery with a lesser 115 mile driving range. And that's a derivative that's only offered in hatchback form. And it's one that few customers for this car will want. The 42 kilowatt hour battery model we're trying here with its 186 to 199 mile range is the version that you'll probably be looking at. And that costs quite a bit more again. Uh, the spec level nearly everyone chooses with this car is Icon Trim. Uh, that's what we've got here. And that's a variant which comes with a grant deducted figure of around £26,000 for this hatchback version or just under £29,000 if you want this Fiat as a convertible with a fabric folding sunroof style top. If you can afford more, then the brand also offers an even better equipped La Prima variant and that costs £2,000 extra in either case. What you can't unfortunately have in the UK is the third body style that Fiat offers with this car in left-hand drive markets, uh, the more flexible 3 plus 1 body shape that's based on the hatch but with a small third rear door opening in the opposite direction and that allows rear passengers to jump in more comfortably. And it's similar to the sort of thing that featured on the very first 500 model back in 1957. Now, unfortunately, that extra door can't be repositioned to the other side of the car with the switch to right-hand drive. Uh, so if it was offered here, it would see passengers getting in and out in the middle of the road. 
Here anyway, our focus is on the conventional hatchback version of this Fiat. So what kind of value proposition do the sticker prices for this battery variant represent in the market for compact electric vehicles? Well, let's take a look and let's quote prices to you, which already take into account subtraction of the government grant. Now, if you like the trendy look of this Fiat, then the three rivals that you'll be most probably drawn to in the city car EV segment will be the Mini Electric, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30, all of which were priced from around £26,000 at the time of this test. Uh, the Mini offers the closest match because, like this Fiat, it's conventionally offered as a three-door hatch. Uh, the Honda and the Mazda, they are both five-door only. Now, the major downside with each of these uh, three direct competitor models is the restricted driving ranges. Uh, they are all only offered with smaller batteries, which limit you to 120 to 130 miles between charges. And that's way off what you'll get with this Fiat. If you want to do better in a really small EV, you'll have to settle for something that looks a lot less trendy. At the time of this test, the VW Group was still selling its Volkswagen e-up and its Seat Mi electric models, both five-door hatches, costing around £21,000 with a 160-mile driving range. Those are really the two cars that the base 24 kilowatt hour version of this Fiat is aimed at. Otherwise, you'll need to be looking at a super mini-sized EV like Peugeot's E208, Vauxhall's Corsa E and the Renault Zoe. Uh, those three cost from around £29,000. And the Peugeot and the Vauxhall go only fractionally further than this Fiat on a single charge. But with the Renault, you could theoretically push your range figure up towards around 240 miles. The summary from that little competitor perusal is that to match the style of this Fiat, you'll have to accept less driving range. And if you want to match its driving range, you'll have to get something that looks a bit more boring. If neither of those two options appeal, uh, you don't mind this Fiat's dinky dimensions and you find yourself really drawn to this new 500, then the deal might be sealed in the Italian brand's favour by a generous standard spec. So is that what you get here? Let's see. Well, let's start by pointing out that as with any EV, you get auto transmission and you'll have to uh, factor in the value of that if you're making comparisons with combustion engine super mini rivals. All 500 EVs do, of course, get the Mode 3 charging cable you'll need for a garage wall box or a public charger. But disappointingly, you'll have to pay extra for the Mode 2 cable you'll need to plug into a domestic three-pin socket. Uh, you'll also have to bear in mind that the fast charging system available with this car varies depending on battery capacity. With the 24 kilowatt hour action spec model, it's a 50 kilowatt setup. With the other 42 kilowatt hour models, it's a gutsier 85 kilowatt fast charging system. Either way, the Combo 2 socket located on the rear right side panel of the car here powers fast charging in both AC and DC. You can preserve that charge while driving with careful use of the three E modes fitted to all versions of this Fiat, Normal, Range and Sherpa. Right, now let's get specific with the models on offer. That smaller 24 kilowatt hour battery pack, as we said earlier, comes only with the hatchback body style and the single action level of spec. Now here you get a fairly basic level of spec, but it does include rear parking sensors, LED tail lamps, uh, auto headlamps, and a decent standard of safety, uh, which we'll brief you on in just a moment. Inside, where the seats are trimmed in eco-minded Sequal yarn, there's a 7-inch TFT instrument cluster and air conditioning. Uh, infotainment at this level in the range is taken care of by Fiat's link and drive system. This gives you a smartphone cradle on which you can mount your smartphone either vertically or horizontally. Uh, Bluetooth will then connect to a dedicated link and drive app which you can use for music, radio, navigation, and everything you need to monitor for electric charging. Most customers, though, are going to want the longer-range 42 kilowatt hour battery that we're trying here, and probably with this test car's mainstream icon level of spec, and that gets you a lot more. Uh, some of the additional items are obvious, like these dark-finished 16-inch alloy wheels. Some less so, like the keyless entry system operated by a black 
button-free pebble, a smart wearable key fashioned from special bio-based polycarbonate which can be carried in a pocket or bag and that communicates with the car automatically unlocking the doors when the pebble is close to the car and locking them again with a simple tap on the door handle. Uh, other icon spec features include cruise control, rain sensing wipers and an eco leather covering for the steering wheel. The key benefit at this level in the range though is the addition of Fiat's latest Uconnect 5 infotainment system with its 10.25 inch high definition horizontal touchscreen featuring a 16-9 aspect ratio which fits perfectly into the car's dashboard. Uconnect 5 is wirelessly compatible with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto operating systems and it offers a natural language interface system and that allows you to talk to the car and control various parameters, uh, set the climate control or choose music for example. Uh, there's also My Wi-Fi and that's a hotspot that connects up to eight electronic devices to the cabin network at the same time. In addition, Uconnect 5 combines with an incorporated telematic box module to also offer a number of useful connectivity services, allowing you to monitor this Fiat from your smartphone. Uh, My Remote checks the battery charge level, uh, schedules charging, tells you your car's exact location, and it sets the climate control so that the cabin can be cooled or warmed uh, before you get into it. My Navigation, uh, that checks traffic and weather conditions along a preset route, and it shows you speed camera and charging point locations too. Uh, My Assistant allows you to talk uh, with an assistant in the event of a breakdown. And My Theft Assistance tracks the car so that it can be recovered if it's stolen. And My Car allows you to check maintenance items, uh, everything from tyre pressures to your service schedule. If you want more, then you'll want the top La Prima level of specification. Uh, that, of course, is where you'll find the real niceties. Uh, this level on the range, you'll get full LED headlamps with auto high low beam, uh, plus bigger 17-inch alloy wheels, chromed side mouldings, and powered mirrors with defrosting function. There's also a fixed panoramic sunroof, which, for a little extra, you can add electric operation into. Uh, key La Prima cabin features include Fiat monogrammed eco leather seats with six-way manual adjustment, uh, a more powerful six-speaker sound system, a bicolor steering wheel, a central armrest, an electrochromatic rearview mirror, door sill kick plates, branded floor mats, a lidded centre console box and wireless mobile charging. Uh, there's also a rear view parking camera with a 360 degree parking feature which offers a drone-like overhead view on the screen when you're manoeuvring. At La Prima level, you'll additionally get the Fiat co-driver pack, which would cost more at Icon level, uh, this being your passport into the brand's latest level two autonomous driving capability, and it's still rare in this class of car. Here at highway cruising speeds, this 500 EV can do much of the driving for you, thanks to a front-facing camera, uh, which monitors all areas of the car, both longitudinally and laterally. Uh, lane centering keeps the vehicle in the middle of any marked lane, plus intelligent adaptive cruise control brakes or accelerates this Fiat in response to surrounding traffic, cyclists and pedestrians. You also get intelligent speed assist, which reads speed limits and recommends applying them. An urban blind spot setup, which uses ultrasonic sensors to monitor blind spots and warn of any obstacles with a triangular warning light on the wing mirror. And attention assist, which provides warnings on the cabin display, uh, recommending that you stop and take a break uh, when you're tired. Uh, pay a little extra on this top model for the optional traffic jam assist setup and the car will also use the same camera system to primarily drive itself in stop-start traffic. Talking of paying extra, let's now go on to consider the various optional features which Fiat offers with this 500. If you're new to EVs before doing anything, you'll have to put aside some spend for the Fiat Easy Warbox home charging system that you'll need for your garage. Uh, that costs £545 at the time of this test. Uh, sadly, you'll also have to pay more for an alarm. Bear in mind too that with the convertible model, you'll have to budget extra for the almost essential wind stop wind deflector. Now that prevents buffeting at speed. Beyond that, the key extra cost items across the lineup are covered off in various optional packs. If you can't stretch to the very top of the range, you'll be offered the popular comfort seats pack, uh, which gives you a central armrest, 
a six-way manually adjustable front seats with height adjustment, a sliding top for the center console and for the base action model, uh, that variant's missing 50-50 rear seat back split. If you've avoided action spec, you'll be offered the optional winter pack. That'll give you front heated seats, a heated windscreen and heat for the wiper blade area. Uh, the other packs are model specific. Now we just mentioned uh, that with this Icon spec model, you could upgrade to level two autonomous driving capability with a Fiat Co driver pack, which for around 1500 pounds more offers all the items we mentioned earlier. With Icon spec, you might also want to look at the Magic Eye pack, which gives you full LED headlamps with auto high and low beam, uh, plus an electrochromatic rear view mirror. Uh, Icon spec customers could additionally consider the style pack uh, that'll give you tinted rear windows, uh, branded floor mats, kick plates, chromed side mouldings, and the dubious benefit of a techno wood dashboard too. Icon spec customers can also add a panoramic sunroof, 17 inch alloy wheels, a wireless mobile charger, and rain sensing wipers as individual extras. If you've bought in at the bottom of the range with action spec, you'll be offered the radio pack, which replaces that variant's rather basic link and drive smartphone cradle setup with a much better seven inch infotainment screen, uh, which incorporates Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Plus you also get a wireless mobile charger. Uh, you can combine this with the features of the winter pack that we mentioned earlier, if you wish. Bear in mind that you'll almost certainly be paying your Fiat dealer extra for your choice of paint color because the only standard shade is solid ice white. Uh, stump up more and you can have a pastel onyx black shade, various metallic colors. We have glacier blue here, or for a lot more, various exclusive tri-coat finishes. Right, let's finish with a look at safety equipment. Uh, the continuing combustion engine version of this Fiat can get away without offering the latest camera safety features, but this much pricier electric model can't. So as well as the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus electronic assistance for braking and stability control, it includes autonomous emergency brake control, which as usual with these systems, scans the road ahead as you drive looking for potential accident hazards, and it will automatically apply the brakes if required. Uh, there is also lane keep assist to keep you in lane on the highway, and traffic sign recognition too, which pictures signs as you pass and then displays them on the dash. Attention assist, that's a drowsiness detector which will warn you if your reactions suggest that you're drowsy. Uh, to this tally, the top La Prima model adds the blind spot warning system that we mentioned earlier. It's refreshing to come to a small fashion-led city car shaped EV and not have to keep finding reasons to justify a restricted driving range as you would have to in the Mini Electric, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30 models which represent this Fiat's most natural competitors. Uh, all of those return driving figures in the 120 to 130 mile bracket between charges. Uh, throughout this test we've been quoting a range of up to 199 miles for the 42 kilowatt hour version of this 500. The actual official quoted range for this hatchback version is 194 to 199. For the convertible that falls to 186 to 188 miles. Overall in our experience on this test 150 to 160 miles has been regularly achievable in normal driving. That's about 50 miles further than we regularly got with the rival EVs that we just referenced. That Fiat has managed this is particularly impressive given that the Samsung battery in use here isn't actually all that much bigger than the 35.5 kilowatt hour battery uh, which is offered by the Mini, the Honda and the Mazda models uh, that I just mentioned particularly when you consider that the part of its battery capacity that this Fiat can actually use is only 37.3 kilowatt hours, uh, from which it generates virtually as much driving range as EV Super Minis in the next class up, like the Peugeot E208 and the Vauxhall Corsa E. Uh, those have batteries rated at 50 kilowatt hours, uh, with around 45 kilowatt hours of that being usable. 
So Fiat's hit the sweet spot here, offering a battery big enough to provide decent range while not being so heavy that it'll compromise not only mileage but also drivability. Of course though, uh, judicious use of two more frugal selectable e-modes, range and the more extreme Sherpa will be needed to achieve uh, the driving figures that we've just quoted. A fraction less impressive is the fact that the cheaper 24 kilowatt hour version of this Fiat only manages 115 miles from its lithium ion cells. Uh, usable capacity there is 21.3 kilowatt hours. Uh, this somewhat hampers that base variant in comparisons to its most natural rival in terms of size and price, the Volkswagen E-Up, which thanks to its larger 36.8 kilowatt hour battery, usable capacity 32.3 kilowatt hours, will take you up to 160 miles between charges. Still, with the average person's daily commute being only around 30 miles, even with that variant, uh, customers would only need to charge this Fiat around every four days. Ah yes, charging. Well, the Combo 2 socket is located on the right rear wing. It has a helpful green charging level graphic and it can accept both AC and DC charging. Uh, Fiat wants to highlight the fact that like the rival Mini Electric, this car has DC fast charging capability to 50 kilowatts with the 24 kilowatt hour model and up to 85 kilowatts with this 42 kilowatt hour variant. As a result, on this top version, full battery replenishment from 0 to 80% with the supplied Mode 3 cable and an 85 kilowatt fast charger, a DC one, if you can find it, takes just 35 minutes. It's 30 minutes with the lesser 24 kilowatt hour model. That means that in just five minutes using a fast charger like that with either variant, you'll get enough juice for 30 miles of range and that's enough for a typical day in the city. Sadly though, with the current pretty poor UK charging infrastructure, it's not very likely that you'll regularly be coming across an 85 kilowatt DC fast charger. At the other end of the spectrum, in its standard 2.3 kilowatt form, the Mopar Easy Warbox at Fit will happily sell you for your garage at point of purchase, uh, which at the time of this test costs £545, takes a yawning 15 and a quarter hours to charge this 42 kilowatt hour model. It's eight and three quarter hours with a 24 kilowatt hour variant. That's not very much better than plugging in uh, to a conventional three pin home outlet, although that requires a mode two cable, which annoyingly costs extra. With the help of an electrician, the Easy Warbox can be upgraded to 7.4 kilowatts and that'll reduce the charging time on this 42 kilowatt hour model to just under six hours. If your property or your business can manage to offer an 11 kilowatt AC three phase 16 amp supply, uh, then full recharging time can fall further to four and a quarter hours for the 42 kilowatt hour model or two and a half hours for the 24 kilowatt hour version. Got all that? Great. You'll need to make use of the provided My eCharge Fiat app to find your nearest public charging station and to access charging modes, uh, payments and history. Uh, you can additionally use this to remotely manage your Easy Warbox or your connected Warbox from home. Uh, the app can also incorporate the RFID payment card uh, which you'll need to provide access to more than 240,000 charging points in 21 countries in Europe. And via the same app, you can check your car's battery charge, you can schedule charging, and you can access dynamic range mapping, which shows on a map the area that can be driven, calculating the maximum possible distance that you can travel on your current charge. And that's based on remaining range and other parameters. Not only does the app allow viewing of the charging points located nearby, it also displays a graphic indication on the map of those that can be reached on your current battery charge level. Uh, the maps are always kept up to date too, and that uses over-the-air updates. Assuming you've chosen this 42 kilowatt hour model, you will have the Uconnect 5 central touchscreen with an electric vehicle display section, and that'll connect you into a series of EV pages. Uh, there's a power flow section, and that gives you an energy monitor showing in real time uh, whether you're using charge in red or regenerating it in blue. 
The same screen also gives instant consumption and kilowatt energy use by the electric motor and by the climate system. Uh, the EV pages also have a schedule section uh, for putting in charging times, which will hopefully coincide with lower tariff electricity costs. And a charge settings page too, that shows your car's current percent battery level and the estimated time that will be required to charge it back up to 100%. Here you can also set the rate of charge level. Uh, while we're on cabin screens, we'll also mention the seven inch TFT instrument binnacle screen here has a right hand power and charge graphic, although all that really does is show you whether you're using the accelerator or not. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, servicing intervals are every year or every 12,000 miles, whichever comes around first. Owners can keep up to date with uh, their car's maintenance schedule, and that's via the My Car section of the My eCharge Fiat app, and that briefs you on the time of your next service and on various maintenance issues. Uh, that interval is better than the one you get with the petrol mild hybrid model. That needs looking at every 9,000 miles. And maintenance should cost less with this EV because the powertrain has so few active components, uh, just an electric motor, an onboard charger, a battery, and of course, an inverter. Inevitably, there are parts that still need maintaining, like uh, brakes, filters and fluids, so your dealer can offer you a bespoke service plan to cover all of that. Insurance is rated at Group 14 for the base 24 kilowatt hour action spec hatchback. Uh, this 42 kilowatt hour hatchback is uh, rated at between Group 16 and 17, depending on spec. Bear in mind, if you go for the convertible body style, then those ratings rise to Groups 19 and 21. But that's still much better than a rival Honda e. Uh, that's rated in the Group 25 to 29 bracket. Uh, like the Honda e and the Mini Electric, you get an unremarkable three-year, 60,000-mile warranty, and Fiat separately covers the battery for eight years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes around first. Because it's pure electric, this 500 is exempt from annual vehicle excise duty, road tax, and its zero emission status, of course, makes it an extremely affordable company car. Uh, Benefiting kind taxation at the time of this test was rated at just 1% for the year 2021 to 2022, and then 2% for the following two years. For Fiat, this new era 500 EV has to work. Globally, this model line is, after all, the brand's only truly successful product range. If it fails, Fiat fails with it. That isn't going to happen. And the reason why is that this car is as much a game changer as the 1957 original. At the stroke, it embarrasses rival brands like Mini, Honda and Mazda, who claimed it wasn't either possible or desirable to create a sensibly priced but stylish, really small EV with a 200 mile driving range, which is nevertheless the kind of thing that many urban based customers will want in coming years. This Fiat delivers just that in a choice of guises. The alternative convertible version is the market's first full electric four-seater cabrio. To be honest, we'd hoped that in all its forms, this car would be more affordable. Looking at the list price figures, you can see why it was so vital that the old combustion model should continue as a more affordable option, uh, a stepping stone into this new design. But this is a car worth aspiring to. Some will even choose it just because it's a 500. Now true, this may no longer be the cheap people's car it once was, but without doubt it retains the spirit of the original.